I see kind of the little light cords connecting all of us. So it's like nothing, nothing happens in a vacuum that we're all connected, that we're all filled with spirit. We're all filled with life. And that's the way, you know, shamans perceive that. And then when we start looking at like medical models, the shaman's view of illness is very different too. Kelly Nealon is joining us today. 22 years ago, she stepped away from her six figure career to learn and apply non-traditional healing methods. Today, this shaman and hypnotist has a thriving business at Lasting Light Wellness Center located in Columbia, Maryland, making a real difference doing what she has always been meant to do. This is Karma Hub, exploring vibrational healing, wellness, and the practitioners that offer it. I always say I'm the most unlikely shaman. So I was like, you know, if you look at everything, how I grew up, my background, every, you know, everything, like I shouldn't be doing this, but every, every past life regression I've ever done, I come back to being a healer, different modalities, different places in the world, different countries, but like, it doesn't matter where I end up, I end up here. And Kelly, can you tell me some of your certifications and, and your background? And then ultimately, mm-hmm. I'd love to learn how you ended up going down this rabbit hole, down this path. Okay. Well, maybe it'd be easier to start with the rabbit hole. So I would okay. say I, I grew up, I grew up, I grew up very traditionally. <laughs> did the, did the, I guess, quote unquote, normal thing. Went to college, got a master's degree, worked in, I was a stockbroker. I worked in IT. Wow. Uh, so I kind of had this very traditional type of career and in, in life. And then I had my own health healing crisis and I went to do the thing about the dummies book. I went to the top doctor in the country and they basically had almost nothing for me. And I was like, well, wait a minute here. Like, I'm not just going to roll over and you've laid out how my life is going to go. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not buying into this. So when the top doctor sent me home and went, okay, well, we'll call you when they come up with the new drug. And I was like, what? Like, What's that going to be like two decades from now? I was like, I don't think so. So I started researching all types of alternative types of health things. So that led me into yoga and into Reiki. So I started working with that and I was able to find healing for myself. And I was like, people have to know about this. So, you know, I did the next logical thing and I I quit my six figure corner office job and (laughs) I went into yoga and energy healing for full time. And everyone thought I was having an early midlife crisis. So that's okay. Um, and I kind of started there and I added other modalities along the way. So in addition to all the, the titles I hold for different types of yoga that I teach, I teach um, and do eight different types of Reiki. And then with shamanism, I've studied with the Cherokee here in the U.S. And then I hold all of my higher titles from the Peruvian lineage, from the, the Andean lineage. So, and then in addition to that, I'm also a reflexologist and aromatherapist, and I do several other types of energy healing modalities as well. So it kind of just came full circle for me that then over the last 22 years, this has essentially just become my life and and my career, but I definitely did not see that coming, you know, especially when I was in grad school. So it was, it was a shock to everyone involved, but it's been the most beautiful path. And I found healing for myself healing for others and just discovered gifts that were latent and I didn't even know that they were there. So it's been an incredibly powerful journey. Wow. I know of more and more people that are studying shamanistic practices. Um, It's it's a very um, intriguing practice, but you are actually considered a shaman. Can you tell me what, what makes a shaman? Like what is a shaman and, and what is it, what is it not? Okay. So I technically the, the word comes from the Tungus tribe and shaman means one who can see in the dark or one can communicate with spirit. So I would say the difference between, and I fully embrace people, you know, utilizing the shamanic practices that are out there. Maybe they got introduced from a friend or they know somebody who's native American or somebody who practices shamanism and all of those things are fantastic. And I think they're right now we're really seeing a calling back to the earth energy and things in ways of the past that people are being called for that kind of grounding. So I I fully support that and am very encouraged by that as well. So what I've done personally, and I'll say that too, there's shamanic practice throughout the entire world. A lot of it has 
very much of the same kernels, but it may be practiced differently. So as far as becoming a shaman, what is a shaman? I'm just going to speak from my Andean tradition since that's what I, I hold the high title and it may be slightly different for other people okay. who are in, in other forms of shamanism. So for me, I had to partake in many, I studied for many years and I created what was called a, a mesa. So we, we Peruvians, hey, we, we're heavy packers. So I've got a whole big, a big bundle here of, of healing stones and a, a healing bundle where maybe in some U.S. Native American tribes, you may see them with like a smaller satchel of like energy medicine things with them. And they practice a little differently than us. We kind of have a big suitcase. So <laughs> this is called our, our mesa. Um, some people call it Misa. I've heard it called it Kipus. It's, it's different people have different names for it. But basically, it holds the essence of a bunch of our healing tools. And this was created by taking a class where I went and journeyed and did different practices in each of the four directions, the north, the south, the east, the west, and also connecting above to the skies and below to Pachamama, the earth energy. And I went there. And I healed my own wounds. You have to heal yourself before you can become a healer for others. So I went into those directions and took what was, I guess you would say, something negative or something that needed to be healed and transform them and put that energy of transformation into different crystals and different sacred objects that are contained within my Mesa bundle. So that was my initial um, initiation into shamanism to create my bundle and be able to then heal from that. And then from there, I did several more years of studies with the shamans to become more proficient at doing various different kinds of ceremonies. And then um, not many people are familiar with the title, but technically I'm a Papa Messiah Uk, which is a fancy name for a um, earth-based Pachamama shama, shaman of a certain level. So I'm very much into bringing unity to the community and as well as healing individuals. So why are so many people seeking out shamans these days? I think because a lot of times, like we've seen, I mean, I have nothing against modern medicine, but you can give, give the same medicine or the same treatment to two people who have, you know, genetically or biologically looking like the same condition or the same situation. Some people are cured and some people aren't. Even the doctors don't have an explanation for why, why that right. is the case. And we find that a lot of times there are emotional or spiritual or other underpinnings to things that are keeping disease locked within the body or it's the mind body connection. And I think right now we're getting to this place where a lot of people are becoming more aware that maybe there's a little bit more out there than they were maybe taught when they were a small child or where they've had a personal experience. A lot of people I've seen don't even have somebody to talk about if they have something, shall we say, interesting happen to them along the way. And everybody's just keeping it down like, oh, I didn't, I had a prophetic dream or I had a feeling or I had a knowing and we're all like keeping all of these secrets inside. And then everybody comes and sees me as like, okay, safe zone. Can I tell you what happened? What did it mean? What do you think? And, you know, all of these type of things. So I think it's this underground movement that's gaining steam as more people are feeling more open about discussing things that are happening. And they're actually looking for a more balanced way to treat themselves. I mean, if you look at especially the U.S. society, we sort of become the society of proud to say we worked ourselves to death. Like we don't need, right. we don't need a break. We don't need this. And we aren't machines. We're not robots. And you see people starting to break down. I mean, how many years can you work 60, 80 hours under this full pressure? You can't, I mean, things start breaking down your body one. And if you don't have your body, that's your vehicle getting you everywhere. So I think people are looking for solutions for their mind, their body, and their spirit. They're really looking at these things coming together because they're saying, okay, this traditional or modern way of living, it's its not working for me. I'm not happy. I mean, if you ask how many people, if they feel like they have connection, just do you have connection in your life? You know, it's, right. it's just getting to be, you know, every, well, I love Zoom and we're on Zoom here, but, you know, some entire people's lives are on Zoom. They don't even have physical contact. Like they can't even tell you the last time they were hugged or someone held their hand or that they felt that they were connected to spirit or energy. So I think it's from that disconnection too, that a lot of people are seeking even just shamanic practices in general. And then those that have 
some serious or not so serious health concerns are also looking for an alternative way that they can address those as well. You hit on it a little bit. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, Shaman's view of the world and mm -hmm. energy and how that relates to an individual? So the shamans believe that everything in the world is connected. So it's just kind of like this giant illusion that we're by ourselves and I can do something in a bubble and it's not going to have any effect. It's not going to ripple out or anything like that. So I can say from being in different you know, shamanic states where I see kind of the little light cords connecting all of us. So it's like nothing, nothing happens in a vacuum that we're all connected, that we're all filled with spirit. We're all filled with life. And that's the way, you know, shamans perceive that. And then when we start looking at like medical models, the shaman's view of illness is very different too than just say commercial, you know, regular traditional medicine. So for instance, um, shamans look for, has there been a loss of power in your life? Sometimes just taking, you know, losing something could even be a job. Like for some people, Losing a job is an inconvenience. Of course, you don't have a job. You got to find another one. For somebody else, their entire definition of themselves may be wrapped up in that job mm, or right. that position. So for them, it's just devastating. It completely takes them out. So sometimes, like I would call that a loss of power for that person. So that's um, something that we would look at doing. So for if someone has a loss of power, typically I would do like a shamanic journey for them. I would figure out, you know, what what is happening and what's going going on with that. And then depending upon how serious that loss of power is or what else is involved, sometimes we have what we call kind of like a splintering of the soul essence. So it's not like, oh, we lost a piece of our soul. It's just that maybe because we had such a fright or something so traumatic happens, sort of like all the little pieces, like some of them start wandering off and they're not communicating with the whole soul and the soul needs to be reintegrated. So for something like that, we would do a soul retrieval ceremony, which I don't really love the name, but that's just what everyone knows if I hear. So for a soul retrieval, it's simply an integration ceremony. So I'm able to go into a shamanic trance and bring back spiritual gifts that will help heal and reintegrate those elements of the soul that kind of went wandering off. And then the last one would be if there's some type of like attachment or negative energy or an energy blockage in the body that's causing things not to be able to flow in the right place. And that can also cause illness. So that's kind of how we look. We're like, okay, what's what's going on with this person? Where, where, why is there not this flow? Because your body wants to be in a state of homeostasis. Like it wants to come back to healing. So we just look in and try to figure out like, well, what's stopping that? What's preventing that? And we try to bring wholeness and balance to that. So what would you refer to as a attachment? It could be depending upon what you're comfortable with and in your beliefs. I mean, you mm -hmm. could have a deceased loved one hanging or deceased spirit hanging on to you. You could have something more nefarious that is, you know, non-human attachment that you wouldn't want on you. You could also have a physical energy block where for a variety of reasons, whether it was chakra based or other based, you've got something that's closed too tightly in other parts of your energy body that are open too wide. So they need to be balanced out so that everything's getting fed an even amount. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I've heard a bit about, well, attachments and um, your soul like fragmenting or did you use the word splintering? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I just find that all very fascinating, but so I, I've gone to a shaman a couple of times and, and, you know, it, it makes a huge difference. I mean, the people that I've gone to are pretty fantastic. It's a huge amount of therapy in a very short period of time. It's, it's amazing what some of this, uh, wild energetic work can do for you. Um, so speaking of energy, so we talked a little bit before, can you describe different types of light energy that, that people hold? within their bodies? So there's two main types of energy from my my path. One we call the light, kind of the light, happy, good energy you want to be full of. That's called Sammy light or Sammy energy. And then the opposite of that would be called Hucha energy. So that's the darker, or as my shamans would call it, if it was translated into English, less good. It's the less okay. good energy because okay. uh, 
uh, I kind of like, I'll bring this up too. It, it's kind of interesting. The shamans I study with speak Quechua. They still speak the native language that was going around when they lived si- alongside the Inca. And then they, they, they fled when the Spanish conquistadors came. But in their language, they don't have negative words. So they literally, hmm. the only thing they could say about something was, we would say, if I was to say define hucha energy, we would probably translate it as evil, bad, dark, you know, all this energy. But the only thing they can say is less good because they don't have any negative words. Wow. So okay. I'd like everybody to kind of reframe that in their mind too of, you know, every word you speak, everything you think about yourself has, has power behind an impression it. on your energy body. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it changes your energy body being. It's, it sends it out into the universe. So imagine that instead of having the bombardment of, you know, all this negative stuff we get from, who knows, commercials, everything else telling you you're not good enough in every single way, that you didn't have that in your head. <laughs> it wasn't even the words for mm-hmm. it, that it had to be tamped down so much to even try to bring it there because there were, you weren't speaking that out into the universe. I really wish we could read you all of our languages in this way. I think it would be so powerful on our energy bodies if we didn't speak anything negative or say anything negative out there, how things would change. You had mentioned different sources of power, seven different sources of power. Can you talk Mm -hmm. a little bit about that? Sure. So in my lineage, the, There's seven different sources of power that a shaman can tap into. You may use one of these, you may use all of them, you know, and depending upon the situation. So the first one is what we call fire, which we use by the sun. So we have sun up above us, we connect in with that energy, that energy obviously can cause fire. So one thing that shamans look at is we look at fire as being transformational, kind of like if you think about the Mm -hmm. phoenix rising from the flames of the ashes. So when we burn, we sometimes create what we call a despacho. And this is a medicine bundle where we're putting, we can do them for a variety of different situations. So it it may be for abundance. It could be for healing. It could be, sometimes we do these type of ceremonies when we're having a life transition. So just say we want to bring good intentions to a marriage or a birth or a new job or a new business or things like that. So we'll create a bundle that we're going to burn with that energy. So that would be something we would be using fire for. And as it, the fire consumes the items in the bundle, it sends all of those wishes and requests upwards and releases all of that good energy that was put into it when when creating it. Okay. And then we also connect in with the earth energy, which we call Pachamama. So we believe the mother earth supports us and all of the things that we do. We walk on earth, she takes care of all of the creations on the earth. So we tap very much in to the mother earth. And one great thing that mother earth does for us that I use a lot is I call her the great recycler. So if we are taking hucha energy off of somebody, if there is something negative, send it down to the earth, not to be punished, not to be whatever. I'm sending it to be retransformed. So it's an upcycling program. Okay, send it through the earth energy, let it be cleansed, retransmuted and transformed into something more positive than it was. So mother earth can be used for many things. The wind and the air, we also can call upon for different things. Sometimes you need to bring in different weather. Sometimes you need it to a wipe away things. Sometimes we need to get messages that come through the air. So it's a variety of different ways that we use that. Same kind of way we connect in with the water energy and waters can take things away. Another way that we can also use that is sometimes we'll do a ceremony. If we were doing a removal ceremony with somebody, it's possible that we can put it into a similar but different type of ceremonial bundle. And that one we would release into flowing water because we want it to be taken away very quickly if we're doing a heavy removal. So that's another way that we can use water in that. We also connect in with animals, plants, and stones. So these would be our power animals. So a lot of people have heard the term maybe power animal, wondering if they have a few or not. Or spirit animal. Is that the same? Exactly. Okay. Same, Same type of thing. So we help people connect with those. We also use our own as being a shaman. They help us when we're doing our healing. Um, You don't hear about it as much, but you also have power or spirit plants too that you can work with. So some people actually work with different types of plants in the same way that they can work with their power animals or their spirit animals. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite 
Julia's is what we call them in Quechua, but they're crystals. So I do a lot of crystal healing and I work very heavily with the crystals. So okay. crystals in their essence, since they have like a specific coarse lattice structure, they hold energy very well. And whatever that stone is programmed or vibrating to, just like the theory of entrainment, if you kind of take yourself back to maybe, I don't know, fifth grade or so, when you learned about that theory where there, the two pendulum clocks were put in the same room that's set to a different time and right. they give off little bits of energy. So after a while, they start swinging in unison together. Mm -hmm. And it's that same theory with crystals. So if you place the crystals on your body and they're at one level and maybe you're at a lesser level and we're trying to bring your energy body up by affecting it by using crystals within it so there's many different ways to to use crystals in healing but that's just one of them with all these different methods what, what would you say your your niche is uh what makes you different from other um shamans mm -hmm. or other practitioners would, in like wellness centers yeah right uh i would say i have a very diverse background so that really helps me with all of my intuitive skills and knowledge that I can just basically tap into my guides and I'm like, okay, what should we do here? Let my guides talk to your guides and see which of the modalities I know, where should I go and what should I do? And my guides are really good at, you know, even if I'm just to say starting a basic protocol, my guides will, oh, you need to go here now. You need to release this. You need to do this. So I feel like I'm very much guided in what I do and how I can best help people. And it usually ends up with a great result. So after, you know, 22 years, I, I just trust it. <laughs> I think it usually turns out great. So within your work, what do you feel has the most positive impact? What do you typically turn to? Well, I know you just said that a lot of it's intuitive and it varies quite, quite a bit, but um, I, I'd love to hear some success stories or, um, mm -hmm. something that creates the most positive impact for, for your clients. And I have a very diverse client base. So I have people who maybe on the surface look great, but are having a lot of problems deep down. Right. And I have other people with, that are coming to me because I'm sort of the end of the line and they're coming to me with very serious health problems that they haven't been able to find help with and traditional means. So I would say a lot of my clients who are just looking for improving their lives, they have either deep-seated traumas from the past and other things that have just kept them stuck. Like it's just been this repeating wound. They have old childhood wounds, things like that. And I'm good at being able to go in there and talk to their inner child and figure out what do they need to stop acting out? What do we need to do to heal this? What kind of ceremony do we need, need to do to fix this? So I work in, in that direction. Um, in addition to my shamanic work, I'm also a hypnotist as well. So sometimes oh, okay. depending upon where people are stuck and how comfortable they are in shamanism versus hypnosis and other mm -hmm. things, sometimes I work with them in hypnosis to help let go of those emotional blocks. So I'm really good at figuring out where where all of the repetitive negative stuff and the repeating of patterns. If people are like, I keep doing the same thing again, I keep getting stuck or I keep on not being able to do that. And I use all my abilities to be able to do that in a quote unquote, more traditional sense. However, I am who I am in any situation. Uh, so I, I rely heavily on, on my intuition. I try to help people in, in every stage that they're, they're in both with physical pain as well as mental and emotional pain. And I think there's a lot more of that that's going on that people, you know, talk about on, on the regular. Like they know mm -hmm. they're not really happy deep right. down and they're not like living their passion. And sometimes they need somebody to go in and just help them unstick their energy body and kind of depending upon what information I get when I work on them from my guides and their guides, you know, can help give them some good information to help them break free of where they are and just get to where they want to go. Cause a lot of times we put ourselves in our own prisons, you know, we've decided yes. we can, we can only operate within this or people will only accept me within this, but maybe that's really not even true. <laughs> You know, maybe they'll they'll all break out. I, I always say I worked at extremely conservative, you know, companies and stuff over the years. And even when I was just starting to do yoga, I would get invited back there. 
they're like, well, we know you're not weird. So we'll, you know, we'll have you come <laughs> okay. and, do, and do yoga or do meditation or talk about mindfulness or things, you know, things like that. So, it's, you know, people are starting to open up and right. their views are starting to change, but, you know, sometimes you just kind of need to open the, open the door a crack to walk through that change and just get some information that may help you make the next big leap. That's what I think is so cool about all of this energy work because, and even including like hypnosis, you can root down and find stuff that's hidden from the person you're working on, mm -hmm. hidden from themselves. And you release that or unlock it, um, mm -hmm. rattle it up a little bit and yes. huge shifts, like really interesting subconscious shifts um, can take place that will completely mm -hmm. change the direction the, the road yeah. that you're walking down. Yeah, it really is pretty fascinating. I was telling someone the other day that, you know, medicine largely works with chemical, chemical within your body. And that has mm -hmm. its place. But we're also very much electrical. And modern medicine generally doesn't work with a whole lot of electrical. I mean, there are some components to it, but mm -hmm. not so much. And so when you get into electrical or, or energetic, you can make changes that, the, that most people are just not familiar with making. And to me, that's what's so powerful about this type of work. Uh, so I, I just think it's fantastic. Um, well, thank you. Is there anything else that you want to hit on that maybe we missed? I would just say that, you know, there's a lot of, reasons beyond like, oh, I feel like I need to go to like a doctor kind of thing that people come to shamanism for. And sometimes it is that feeling of just feeling disconnected or they're feeling lost or they feel like they've just kind of lost something along the way and they don't even know what it is. Like it's hard to put a finger on it, so to speak, to like, what is wrong? I just know that like, I've had people come in, this, I know something is off, something is wrong, something is not aligned. I don't know what it is. I don't have the words to describe it, but I know I don't feel like myself. So I help a lot of people get out from those type of things, as well as major or minor medical issues or big energetic problems as well. But I would just ask people to start tapping into even just how they're feeling on a daily basis, like waking up and taking a little check in, like, how am I feeling as a human today? You know? So I think that many people are realizing the path we've been on isn't, isn't the healthy path and isn't the path we wish to go forward with. And we want to model for future generations. So there's many different reasons why people come to me. Kelly, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. It's been great. Thank you for having me.